On this video, we're going to be reviewing the proper installation for the M9000 series Dorma mortise lock. This mortise lock is uh, set from the factory with the hand appropriate to our door. So as we get started, let's start by talking about handing. This particular door, this is the outside of the door and the hinges happen to be on the right hand side. So this is a right hand door as it's swinging in and the lock we have here is set for a right hand door. The way that I know that is that the curved surface of the latch is matching this swing so that the curved surface will hit the strike and retract. The other thing that I also know is these two screws that you see here on the inside of the case. This indicates that this is the unlocked side of the door. We do want the unlocked side of the door facing the inside. <clears throat> the, the actual function of the lock that we're going to be installing today is called a M9953. The M9 means it's our heavy duty mortise lock. The second 9 indicates that it has a deadbolt, and the 53 indicates it is an entrance function, which will have a lock cylinder on the outside and a thumb turn on the inside. Now, there's one more adjustment we need to be aware of when we're getting ready to install this. So, when handing is involved, we need to make sure that the curved face is facing the strike plate, that the screws are facing the inside of the door. The next thing we also have is on the top and the bottom, you can really... Uh, loosen this screw and you can twist the lock front to match the bevel of the door. This particular door has a square edge as opposed to a bevel edge so I want it in the middle which is where it is currently located. If you had a bevel you would loosen these, twist it to match the bevel and then retighten the screws. Now that we've had a chance to review the handing we're ready to install. Before I install, I do like to look inside the door and make sure that there is adequate uh, preparation inside the door, which is usually reinforcing plates inside. And you'll notice that there happen to be two little tabs on either side here, which will help to center and locate the lock when installed. So I'm going to take and I'm going to slide this into my door prep, slide it all the way in. And now I'm going to have the opportunity to put in the two screws that are going to secure this. There's going to be one screw on the top and one screw on the bottom. I'm going to get them started. Now in this particular video, to keep it as brief as possible, I'm going to use my battery powered screwdriver. That is a nice to have, not a need to have. You can certainly put these in uh, with a standard hand screwdriver. Uh, but just to keep it short, I'm going to use the battery powered screwdriver. Now whenever working with these, do realize that they do have an adjustable clutch and we want to turn that back so that we don't over tighten and strip the screws. So now that I've had the opportunity to install the chassis, I can now get ready to put the outside trim onto the door. Now that we have installed the lock chassis and both the inside and outside trim, we're ready to check our work. The first thing that I like to do is I'll check the inside lever. When I turn it, it pulls back the latch. I'm going to throw the deadbolt. I'm going to check the inside lever again. And now it pulls back both the deadbolt and the latch. Now the next thing I'm going to check is the, the uh, dead latch mechanism. There's a small tongue underneath our latch. I'm going to push that in. And I'm going to check to make sure that it locks my latch. So when the door is closed, this is held in by the strike plate and it allows the latch to lock so that somebody couldn't slip the latch with a credit card. Now that I've checked the, how the inside trim works, I'm going to check the outside trim. First thing I see is that by default the outside trim is locked. If I flip the little toggle on the edge of the door, it turns it into a passage set and it allows me to enter freely from the outside. If I push the toggle in the, in the opposite direction, it locks the outside lever like it should and it's going to give me a chance to take my operating key and check the cylinder. I turn it and it pulls back the latch. If I throw the deadbolt and I turn the key, it will pull back the deadbolt and it will pull back the latch so that we can operate it with the key. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to shut the door and make sure that it engages the strike properly. It's also important to understand that when a door is properly hung, there should be a... It's very important 
that we check the dead latch mechanism. There's a small tongue underneath the latch here, and when we push in on it, as it would be held in by the strike plate, it will actually lock the latch, protecting against somebody trying to open the door with a credit card. When we get ready to close the door, we're going to want to make sure that the latch engages properly into the strike plate and that the deadbolt throws properly. But before I close the door, I'd also like to discuss that there is a normal door gap that we should see all the way around the perimeter of the door. That is by industry standards considered to be one eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch is approximately the thickness of a nickel. We need to be very aware of that because especially on fire doors, it is a requirement of building code that that gap be at one eighth of an inch or less when the door is closed to prevent uh, the effects of smoke and heat from going through that door. So that's another thing that we're going to check is the, the thickness of the door gap. So now I'm going to close the door and I'm going to check and make sure that it is engaged into the latch and it has there's no rattle and it closed and locked very easily. So just to check that again, it closes and latches and engages without having to push or pull on the door. So at this point, we have now had the opportunity to see the proper installation of the Dorma Architectural Hardware M9000 series lock.